there. You're watching The W Show. Thanks, of course, to Nav. It is great to have your company as we count down to round five. And along for the ride this week, award-winning journalist Sarah Black. Sarah, welcome to you. Thanks for having me on, Nav. It's great to have you here. It's a massive week. We've got AFL Grand Final and, of course, round five of AFLW coming up. And we're lucky enough to be joined by the Bulldogs skipper in Ellie Blackburn. Ellie, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's uh, good to be here back on the W show again. Ah, it's great to have you back and the Bulldogs are absolutely flying. Yeah, we're going well. So the timing's impeccable at the moment <laughs> to, to be on and we can chat all things doggy soon, I have no doubt. And also Premiership Captain. It's fitting that we have you on this week in uh, Grand Final Week. Absolutely. Yep. Sarah, you said it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't like touting that at all before the show. No, we love having Ellie on. We will get to the Bulldogs. They are our deep dive this week. But first, let's get to the news. Thanks to NAB. There has been plenty going on this week of course Jackie Vott banned for a strike on Ellie McKenzie which isn't great news for the Bombers. The Sydney Swans they've actually relocated to Melbourne in preparation for round five of course coinciding with the men playing in a grand final too. We've got a couple of rising stars in Montana Ham and Keely Skepper and Sarah some big news today uh, obviously Christina Bernardi uh, elevated because Carlton have been absolutely ravaged by injury. Yeah, so they got away with the two points against the Dockers, but sort of at what cost? They've lost Phoebe McWilliams now for the season. Uh, Darcy Vessio, Amelia Villado and um, Paige Trudgeon will also spend some time on the sidelines. So they've hit that trigger where you can bring in a, a train-on player. So it's great to see Christina back on the AFLW level. It'll be her fourth AFLW club. Yeah, um, the and second she'll... player to do that. Exactly, and I think she'll slot in really well in that forward line, just what they need. Well, as we approach the halfway mark, of course of the season it's all going so very quickly the ladder of course is starting to shake take shape and as we know Ellie Blackburn's Bulldogs are right up there they're one of two clubs that are undefeated so far what has been the most pleasing part of the first sort of four weeks or so of the season well I mean obviously winning games of footy is uh, <laughs> a highlight of it but it, it's just the the from a number that are helping our team win at the moment. We've been able to see three 17-year-olds debut for us, which is absolutely incredible. But also the, the likes of Kirsty Lamb just continuing on from her all-Australian form as well. She's an incredible player, incredible teammate. I'm really to stand by her side week in, week out. And three straight 10 coaches' votes for Kirsty. As you oh. said, she is just at, an, at another level this year. But it's really been the, the younger players who have caught my eye, Ellie. I wanted to ask you about Isabel Pritchard, Katie Lynch and, Ellie, and Eleanor Brown in defence, um, you know, uh, Izzy Grant as well. How have, the, how have you seen those girls come on? Oh, they've been incredible. And, and we knew that this would happen over the coming years. So, obviously, when we drafted them, a, a few years ago now, but to see their development just in, in full swing and, and they're not even remotely near what they're going to be able to do in, in years to come. But for me, it's, it's Izzy Pritchard is probably the biggest improver out of that list, I would, I would say. I mean, that's not saying the other girls haven't improved. Like, they've done it incredibly. But just her role, she's... We've swung her around in, in mm. sort of different roles and she's just taken it on really strongly and she's just a great character and an incredible footballer to, to have on our team. She's been super impressive. Mm. Uh, I spoke to you in the pre-season and we talked about the fact that you, the Bulldogs haven't made finals since 2018. We know that season six was difficult for a number of reasons. Finals firmly on the agenda is what you told me. Is it the young crop, this new generation of young pups that are really going to drive you towards that next flag, do you think? Oh, absolutely. They've, they've just got so much energy about them as well. Like, it's it's so much fun at training, being with them and, and being in the gym and just listening to the way they talk in general <laughs> and, and the way they carry on and all that stuff. It's, it's so much fun to be there and I think they're the ones that are completely driving what we're trying to achieve and, and they're so passionate about it. Like, they know, and it's definitely spoken about that we won a grand final in 2018, but as you said, that's the only finals game that we've mm. played and been a part of. So we, we want to play finals footy. I mean, that's why you play footy is, is for the ultimate team success. That's why you put through all the hours that you do in the pre-season and off-season. So these girls want it just as much as sort of the older players do. So they're driving it, absolutely. You've got a couple of more sterner mm. tests, I guess, with North Melbourne this week in a couple of weeks' time. You've also got the D who suffered their first loss at the weekend in round four. Where's the improvement, do you think, that's still to come for your group as you continue to build? 
I think it's just the consistency in our performances. I think you, you'll see that we drop off for a quarter or here or there. So I think it's being able to play a four quarter performance for us is, is something that we're looking forward to doing. Um, and obviously that will come with like, as you saw from that list before, we've got a lot of 20 to 22 year olds on our list. So we're, we're just trying to get gains into them, get a bit of experience into those girls. But the consistency um, in our performances um, on the weekends is, is definitely what we're looking for. Sarah, I mentioned North Melbourne. Obviously, the dogs coming up against them this weekend. Where do you see the map? Because they lost a few players. I mean, Caitlin Ashmore's one. Um, Aileen Gilroy as well went to the Hawks. Where did you see them? Did you expect them to make finals, or, or where did you have them at? They definitely still have the players to make the top eight. Um, I, I think they're pretty much exactly where we thought they'd be, yep. which is in a good position. I, I think, you know, they're two and two, but the two losses they had were to Adelaide and to Melbourne, and they didn't disgrace themselves by any means no, in those so losses. Close. Um, so I think, you know, there'd be eight to ten clubs who would love to be in the position mm. that North Melbourne are in, um, and, and I firmly expect to see them in the top eight at the end of the season. Is there an area of improvement? Like, where do you think they sort of fall down in terms of weaknesses? You mentioned the loss of the run. Um, of, of Gilroy and Ashmore. I think Taylor Gatt's done a really good job to slot in on that wing, but they're still missing a little bit of drive off half back from Gilroy. Um, and the forward line is still, as ever, a work in progress. Vicky Wall has, has done really well off um, very limited preparation, um, but, but they're still tinkering with that attack, I think. It'll be a big mm. clash, though, early this weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the game against them. We haven't beaten North Melbourne before, so hopefully we can tick that off the list this week. But it'll be a great contest. I mean, they've got a number of incredible players and one in Jasmine Garner, who I personally think is the most mm. influential player in the game, the way she goes about it. So, yeah, we'll have our work cut out for us. It'll hopefully be a good game for us. Might need to put a bit of time into it then. Oh, potentially, but, I mean, they've got a number of players that are good as well. <laughs> but... Yes, we'll see. We'll don't, see. don't give away. Not going to give secrets. anything away. That's Time okay. will tell on Friday. <laughs> well, of course, it's not the only. Uh, it's not only the Bulldogs who, of course, are undefeated so far in season seven. The Brisbane Lions are at the top of the ladder. Their percentage sitting at about three hundred and twenty-one percent, which is just ridiculous at this point of the season. They beat the D's, of course, at the weekend. Clearly, the benchmark of the competition. I, I'm keen to hear from both of you, but Ellie, what makes them so good? They're a team. I think that's the, the most important factor that they've got on their side. And and just hearing the way Craig Sarsovich talks to them, he's so articulate the way he delivers his message to the team. So they know exactly what they need to achieve when it comes to their game style and the way they need to execute. But they've got a number of players across the board. They've got the reigning AFLW Best and Fairest winner in um, Emily Bates. But it's not just her that's doing the job. Like Conway on the wings playing great. Brie Conan, who is an incredible defender, who's clearly underrated in the way she goes about it. She holds that team really well together in the back line. But there's a number of other players in that defence as well that really hold them up and, and in their midfield too, Sarah. Yeah, Shannon Campbell doesn't get the love she deserves, I don't think. Um, she's, she's tough as nails. She has... She pretty much takes the toughest opponent every week, whether that's someone who's much taller than her or a, or a nippy small forward. Um, so the work of, of Conan and Campbell together, um, you know, throwing Jade Ellinger as well in defence, and, and, and they've got a really strong lineup alliance. Fitness is the other part, Sarah, that they just look so supremely <laughs> fit and athletic as a group, and it looks like they're just a little bit above everyone else in terms of that area. They run out games so well. If, if you're going to take the Lions apart and really nitpick, one thing that they have struggled a little bit this season has been slower first quarters. But, my God, if they come home with a bullet, <laughs> they, they really just outrun games. Um, and, and they have the confidence that they're able to do that. Well, speaking of their fitness and their improvement as a whole, this is what Emily Bates had to say during the week. I think it's honestly just our fitness. Uh, we had a massive pre-season where we've worked sort of harder than we've ever worked before. So I think we know we can run out games and even if we are behind, we know we can outrun teams. So I think having that belief in ourselves and just our work rate, um, yeah, it's really helping us. So they are supremely confident in that regard. And as we mentioned, pretty much after quarter time, they just managed to dismantle the demons. Sarah, what are the areas of concerns when we look at Melbourne? Because we talked about them a lot in the preseason. They were the team to beat. The Lions are now sort of overtaking them. But where are the concerns for the Ds? I think off the top, we need to acknowledge that Taylor Harris and Geordie Ivey didn't play yeah. in this game. Um, so that changes Melbourne's forward line significantly. They had a debutante in Georgia Campbell, um, you know, trying to spearhead that attack. 
tax. So, you know, we'll, we'll put that to the side. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I think just the, the defence just looked a little bit shaky at times and, and it was just the manner in which they conceded goals that, that really concerned me, Ellie. Yeah, as we saw here, Jesse Wardlaw, I think, got a couple of goals right on the goal line um, for the Lions. And, and it was a part of the message from Craig Sarsovich at three-quarter time as well, was he wanted he wanted Brisbane to pull their defenders up the ground. So he wanted yep. them to play as high as possible and then kick goals out the back. And we saw this from the vision as well, that they were able to execute and do that extremely well. It was definitely part of their game style. They The conditions weren't amazing. It was sort of a, a, a bit wet out at Casey Fields, but they were able to get the ball deep inside 50 and let their smalls go to work. Their tall forwards are in incredible nick at the moment and are bringing the ball to ground. I mean, so from a, from a Melbourne perspective, that was hard for them to defend and, and they were very vulnerable in those circumstances. So Melbourne play Carlton Friday night at Icon Park. Of course, grand final Eve football. We absolutely love to see it. But um, it's going to be tough for the Blues on paper. You look at their injuries in the outs. It's just really difficult and challenging for them to be able to get a win in this situation against Melbourne. But what do they need to do, Ellie, in order to have any chance of beating the Ds? I think they need to make their defenders defend. And I know that yep. kind of sounds silly in a way, but they, like Libby Birch, for instance, loves to play off her opponent and, and then likes to get across and support and, and help out in that instance. So if you draw them up the field and try and use those players through a, a chain kick or whatever it might be, it has to make those defenders actually defend. And it makes them really vulnerable in those instances. But mind you, I think Brisbane are the best team in the comp competition, obviously, aside from ourselves. <laughs> yes, um, good. But, I mean... Melbourne, I, I wouldn't underrate them by any means. I think they're the, the next best. So I think they're incredible the way they've been going. So it's going to be a really tough game for, for Carlton come Friday. But that's one thing that I would, I would look at doing. OK, well, time now for our unsung hero. And Ellie did mention Brie Kernan and how she has been, I guess, uh, underrated as a leader. Sarah, there's another leader that's sort of been underrated as well. I think Emma Swanson has had arguably the toughest job in football, um, having to, in AFLW football, having to captain West Coast through um, multiple transitions. They've continually turned that list over. And she's been... And the coaches. One, and coaches, exactly. She's been the one constant through that entire time. Um, and I think now that things are starting to click a little bit better for the Eagles, we're really seeing Swanson starting to come into her own as a player. Um, she's really tenacious. You can never question her effort across the game. But, you know, she, she's a genuine match winner too and she probably doesn't get the respect she deserves. So we've got a public holiday on Thursday and we have a double header on Thursday as well. So the Western Derby or... Derby Derby Derby. Derby Derby. Derby. What, do, what do you say? Oh, I, I just avoid the word. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that, that's actually really smart. The Western Derby, I believe, is what they would say if you're over in WA. That's on on Thursday afternoon, which is fantastic. But is this West Coast's best chance, do you think, to get their very first Derby win, given the struggles that Fremantle have had, Ellie? I think so, and I think coming off the back of a win as well for from a West Coast perspective, you know, they're, they're building confidence. And like what you said, Emma Swanson is an absolute match winner. So Fremantle are going to have to put in a fair bit of time and effort into her. And, yeah, obviously considering the form that Fremantle are in, nobody expected it to be this case for them. So I think when you look at past seasons and how dominant Fremantle have been, this is definitely West Coast's best chance of winning it. And West Coast is such a young, developing side. Like, confidence, as you said, is key. And, and the ability to have that belief of going, you know what, this is our time. Whereas a couple of years ago, they would have looked at Fremantle and gone, well, that's probably a step too far. And they haven't had the consistency either of having, like, a, a Dana Hooker, Emma You're Swanson right. and Ash McCarthy on the park as well. Mm. So I think that definitely helps her team. Yeah, Ash more. McCarthy has been stellar for the West Coast Eagles when she has been playing. It has been a tough season so far for the Dockers. They're yet to notch up a win. They drew with Carlton at the weekend. This was their coach, Trent Cooper, after the game, talking about their finals chances. Um, yeah, to be honest, uh, after the Geelong game, sort of, we weren't really thinking about them too much. Like, if we're going to challenge, we want to win, be in the position to win the Premiership. And I think it's fair to say at this stage we're, we're not playing at that level. So if we sneak into the eight or not, it's sort of a bit by the by. We want to be get, getting back to playing our really good footy. And um, it, with that, things will maybe look after themselves. Maybe we're too far back already, but it's not a real focus for us at all at this stage. I absolutely love Trent Cooper. I think he's a great coach and I love his honesty. 
I just wonder, what does a comment like that in a public forum do for the playing group, Ellie? When, when you hear your coach say that and you're like, oh, well, what are we playing for? Like, what does that do for the group, do you think? Yeah, it's a it's a really tough one because I mean it's it's also understanding and and acknowledging where you're at at the yeah. moment and and taking accountability and ownership in in that regards. But it's almost like, do you lose a sense of belief because the reason why you play footy and you put in the hours that you do in terms of the pre-season, the off-season work, and the level of commitment that you display each week is. You want to win a grand final. Mm. I don't play this just purely for fun. I mean, I love footy and, and all of that, but I play at the highest level because, you know, I, I want to win a premiership and I dedicate so much yep. of that time to it. So does it knock a little bit of sense of belief out of the team? I'm not too sure, but, I mean, that's conversations that they might have behind the scenes as well that we don't necessarily know about either. I mean, you had a really tough season um, last season, season six, COVID and, and a number of things sort of set you back. It took a while to get that momentum. You beat the Adelaide Crows who, who won the flag, of course. So we knew you were a good team, but you were up against it from the start. How difficult and challenging is that to kind of rally your team around you as a leader to kind of find something to salvage moving forward? Yeah, you're right. I mean, that was us last season. I, I think we didn't win a game until maybe round four or something like that. So I, I understand the, the position that they're in and it is really challenging, but it's the little wins that you need to look for and, and aim to achieve. And, and the little wins, are, you know, what you sort of trademark your game style around. So is it your contested possession? Is it the running carry that you're trying to achieve on the outside? Is it ground balls? Or is it, you know, how many goals or how many goals you defend in a game? Whatever it might look like, it's those little wins that you try and have each week and then build that forward. I mean, you don't want to knock down the season too early, but mm. if you realise that you're not going to play finals footy and you're pretty keen about your club and, and want to commit to it as much as possible, then you try and build for the, for the next season off the back of that stuff. Interesting insight. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, time now for the buzz. There's been plenty happening on social media and we start with the Sydney Swans girls watching the men make it into a grand final, beating the Pies by that one point. It was thrilling. This was their hotel in Adelaide. And then we have Erin Phillips doing a little bit of recovery with her daughter, which I absolutely love. And speaking of daughters, this is Kate Dempsey celebrating a win. This is a beautiful moment. <laughs> Little Pippa being held up there as the uh, Lion King, one of my favourite Disney movies. That that was a nice moment for her to share. Yeah, all really touching moments, all three of those occasions, and beautiful to have um, Kate Dempsey's daughter in the in the room and in the in the huddle for the for the circle. What a beautiful moment. It's probably the only time I'd take another piece of music over the Richmond theme song. <laughs> the that was playing life. underneath, yes. <laughs> OK, I love it. It's a little bit of uh, clever work from our social lead at <laughs> AFL, at womens.afl, and Caitlin Arnold. Um, what are we looking forward to in round five? And I was going to say this weekend, but it all starts on Thursday. Sarah, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, I've got my eye on the match between Collingwood and Essendon. I feel like this is a real old-fashioned battle of Collingwood's defence versus Essendon's forward line. What about you, Ellie? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Sydney Hawthorne game. I mean, it's exciting that they've got the, the Friday night game um, at the Swinburne Centre and two expansion teams looking for their first win. And obviously we've with Sydney in the grand final as well for the men's competition, I think it'll be really exciting there. Fingers crossed the Hawks can get a uh, first <laughs> win in their <laughs> AFLW. Looking forward to that one. I'm just looking forward to watching four games of football on Friday, which is so very exciting as we lead into the men's grand final, of course, and the rest of AFLW round five. Now, Ellie, before you go, we've just got a little thank you because our good friends at Xena Sport, who are a valued NAB customer, have got a voucher for you. The Xena Z1 and Youth Vest are a fantastic way to help protect and empower females athletes of all ages so that is coming your way it has been great having you on the w show again thank you so much for being here and best of luck this weekend thank you hopefully get a win on friday too i know we don't want to jinx the fact <laughs> no, that no, we no, could we don't. <laughs> right. no 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 sarah love your work as always thank you so much for joining us on the w show enjoy what is to come for round five aflw for all of your women's news make sure you go back to women's.afl and the aflw app we will see you next week Thank you.